Um, thank you everybody for having us today. Um, I'm Richie from Awesome Tistic, and for the last 34 years I felt like an absolute freak and weirdo. Um, and it wasn't until I got diagnosed with my autism two years ago that I decided to believe in myself and open my business, which is Awesome Tistic. Today I'm going to tell you a little story. It's open and honest, and I wear my heart on my sleeve. Um, it is a little bit sad, but obviously I turn all that around and try and triumph. When I was two and a half, I was um, adopted because of child abuse and neglect and my parents left us in a house for three days by myself and I was all beaten up and stuff and I went into the hospital. Um, by the way, I have to just touch this spot because I forgot to touch it before because I said I wanted to be in the middle. Um, okay, so back on the game. All right. Yes. Yeah, so obviously that wasn't a very nice time, and I got put into care, and I got I got well in things, and then I got adopted. And sadly, when I got adopted with these parents, I didn't strive with these, and I had a very child um, troubled childhood bringing up. Because not knowing I had autism at the time, a lot of things were things like um, I wish I never got you. You're thick and stupid. Um, they used to say I'm going to send you back. I used to wet the bed and they used to show me pe like my friends that I used to wet the bed and stuff. Um, and I stood, because I couldn't strive to get with these people because of my adoption, I had a detachment disorder. And what happened is, is um, I needed a, a space, not understanding who I was, but in this toilet, what happened is, is, like I told you, I'm very open and honest. I used to play with poo and I have been doing that for the last 25 years um, without knowing why. And it was because of the smell and the feeling of all this texture and stuff. But try and use your little imagination here. When your dad doesn't understand what's going on and you open that door and you come out of there and he sees this kind of behaviour, even weighing in the sink or whatever it is, is you get wrong in a particular way. And I don't really want to speak for that man, but try and use your imagination of how wrong that I got. But what I did learn that day was a lesson and what that lesson was is what's socially accepted to show you guys and what I actually really need to do when I was not very confident in myself and I was only a tiny little lad. And I realised, well, what I can do is in that toilet when I'm doing them kind of things, I can clean it all up and absolutely fine. When I come out of there, um, my dad looks at us and goes, oh, well, that bollock can sorted him out. That's absolutely fine. That problem solved. But that problem wasn't solved. I really realised that in this toilet is a safe place. And I used to do a lot of things like um, smell tissue paper and the tissue that was in there bang my head off the back of the base and I used to hit myself on the back of the head like this all of the time when I was in the bath I used to do it and I quickly learned that I'm going to have to start getting to grips with what I can show everybody else and what I need to do and I created this little boy called Presentation Rich and that was the presentation that I was going to show to everybody um, and what I would do is I'd compress that at school and I'd come across like I was a bit like the naughty lad at school and I'd come across like I was like hyperactive people used to say I had ADHD that I can't drink pop and coke and things like that I quickly learned some other life lessons that um, I didn't want to be in house with these people so what I would do is I'd run home but I to go out and play with my friends straight away but I couldn't play out with my friends straight away because they're all having their lovely family tea so I quickly realized right well, what I'll need to do is I'll have to put a little cutlery box and in this big field I had this little box that was locked up and stuff and with a little Tupperware box with my cutlery in I'd run home from school microwavable chips shove some fish fingers in jump over the fence and then sit and eat my tea because I didn't want to be in the household because this is where things would like I'd get hit and things and nearly pushed down the stairs smash my bedroom up and it was horrible um, but then I quickly learned another lesson that actually if I go home and I'm dirty then they're going to kick off that I've got dirty clothes and the tired of washing them all the time so then therefore I'd find the puddles and I'd go down to this little railway track and I used to wash all my clothes in there and it just built up and up and up and up and now obviously we're being 35 I've got really good at compressing myself but it wasn't until I got diagnosed with my autism when obviously it says it's okay to be me that I realized that I need to start showing this and what it is is the box of tricks that I had so we have I've got a box over here which has got lots of um like different types of sensory items and squidgies and all these type of stuff but my box was a box that had measurements in it it had this, um, a cassette player in there which is something that I used to stim off um, which had like a little bit of ribbon in here that I would stim off and I'd, I'd kind of burn my fingers off it um, and what would happen is, is I created this drawer inside my bedroom this hidden drawer and I even created my own nappy as well because I was tired of wetting the bed and getting my friends showing it and I caught it become more self-aware and more self-aware so sadly I didn't have a box that looked a little bit like this one here, which is what everybody grows up in this lovely sensory world. But that, that was my sensory box. And because of that, that's what made us feel like a freak. And I started looking over my shoulder to see why people were staring at us. And then all of the other boys and girls were doing the same. And what I found out is, is surprise, surprise, as I was going and I was having a troubled childhood, I didn't get any GCSEs, the G, like the ones between A and C. The other GCSEs that I got were um, G for German, F for French, G for geography, um, and D for drama. So I thought that was pretty cool because all of them kind of rhymed. Um, so that was pretty good. A lot of people that I've met when I've been doing my stuff is, is that you can compress at home and then they'll let it all out at school or they'll compress it um, at school and let it all out at home. But for me, I didn't really have that escape because at school I felt like a freak and at home I felt like a freak and because I felt very alone all my life, I didn't have anywhere to go. Um, and my first job was a job at Frankie and Benny's. When I got that job, I quickly realised that being really hyperactive and being centre of attention got us a lot of friends. Because in that social gathering on the night time when everybody's busy and stuff and you're buzzing around all of them tables, everybody's starting to like us. But what they didn't really realise is that I was still going to the toilet 
um, and playing with like stuff like till rolls and stuff because of that sensory stuff. So every time I would do that, that would make us feel a bit like a freak and a weirdo again and again and again. Um, and there's only so much a human brain can take before you have a meltdown. And my meltdown hit rock bottom, tried to commit suicide twice. I started to self-harm on me, um, me back and my legs. Um, I started into the gambling. I spent three or four thousand pounds in the bookies. Um, and it was really going down and down and down. I was on loads of antipsychotic medication. It was all going more medication, more medication. And I remember this one time I took 90 paracetamol, 90 ibuprofen, um, and a bottle of Pessoa. Um, I took it all in one go and it didn't do the job, thankfully. And I remember waking up the next day, I thought, Rich, somebody's got to try and um, look after yourself and you need, to, you need to do this. And I woke up that day and I said, I'm going to show everybody that I'm strong. And I started doing seven years worth of therapy. And that's 70 therapy I did. Um, cognitive therapy, CBT, cat therapy, group therapy, one-to-one. -one. Um, I really worked really, really hard and I came out. With it. And this is when I started realising that, um, you know, when serious life finds a way, I've, I'm a big believer that... Um, Things happen for a reason. And when I first, believe it or not, what happened is I phoned the service called After Adoption. And the first time I phoned them, in the same hour and the same day, my birth mom phoned that person. Um, and I says, oh, hi, I'm looking for this lady. And I obviously told her her name. She says, oh, we just had this person on the phone. I was like, no way. And that was the moment that I realized that things are going to start happening for a reason. And when I met her, um, the first thing she said to us is, Rich, just let you know, when I had you, I used to cut myself. And I thought, oh, well, I'll go home and do that because that's what my mom's doing. That's what I need to live. And that started like, doing that all over again and things. So that even went more spiral time of conversation, went down, down, and down. Even when I was seeing some of the professionals, I mean, I don't know if anybody's seen the film Lost Boys, but when somebody would say, Rich, right, thank you for coming to the session. What's your favourite film? I'd say The Lost Boys. He says, is that because you feel like a lost boy? It didn't actually have anything to do with that because it's a blood-sucking vampire film and it's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> um, so that kind of confused. And I quickly learned that I just have to be one of them. People say, yeah, I'm all right, thanks. And just tell people what they want to hear all of the time. Again, compressing myself and whatnot. And then it, after that, I kind of came out with that therapy and I came on top of myself. I thought, I, if my birth parents walked through this door now, I would not be bothered. I'd probably give them a high five because I'm very grateful for the life that they give us because I'm standing in front of you guys doing what I do. And what it was is I thought, well, I'm going to prove to everybody out there that I'm not thick and stupid, that I'm going to go and get a qualification. And what's really weird about it is, is actually I used to come to Newcastle College um, and I blagged myself on when I was 28 on Newcastle College course, um, BTEC level three. Um, and he says, Rich, I tell you what, if you get student of the year, I'll give you an iPad. I says, right, no problem. So I got student year, and I got three years in a row, and I got 57 distinctions, and I got a full foundation degree in mechanical manufacturing engineering, and, when, and I basically got the highest qualification that, like, score that you can get, and it still stands. I made a handout and, uh, device, which was had a 3D printed drill and things. And I just did that to prove, and I impressed them that much, they actually give us a job, and I worked here for a little while, so that was quite cool. <laughs> So that being around, I turned my life around a little bit more and I thought, right, well, why don't I try for some kids? So me and my partner tried for some kids and sadly that didn't work. And this one again, when things happened for a reason, um, we went down the IVF route. The second attempt, on, the first two didn't work, sorry, and then the third attempt, um, it did work. So everything's going really well, but then sadly we lost it quite late in. Um, and this is going to sound really bizarre, but I'm really proud that we lost. I'm really grateful that we lost that child because I've now adopted my own two children. Um, and when me growing up being adopted and then turning up to adopt some children, um, that was really cool. And that's been like a, not a long ambition for me. And this is still without being diagnosed with autism, by the way, because I was great at being presentation rich because at home, I still wouldn't show the person I was with that I was doing all these things. I was still going into cupboards, smelling magazines, playing with cellar tapes. I mean, masking tapes, which I've got over there, have got all big different types of smell and stuff. Um, and it wasn't until I had my daughter had a really loud scream. And my daughter had this big, big scream, and I thought, why am I getting so angry? So I thought, right, what I'll do is I'll go to the doctors because I know when I need some help, I'll go to the doctors and ask because I'm proud. Went there and he says, Rich, I think you might have this thing called autism. Sadly, I don't have a long time to explain this to you, but there's a big part of that chapter that it was really hard to learn myself over that 18 months. And when I was, long story short for that, when I got diagnosed um, in front of this doctor, he said, it was Rich, yep, you've definitely got autism, and I'm so sorry. And again, things happen to reason. That person that diagnosed was the same person I'd seen as 10 years beforehand, and he turned around and said he's sorry. So when I was getting diagnosed, he said, was Rich, you've got this insight that I've never seen before, and that insight is because of the life that you've had, that you've been so scared and you became so self-aware because you're scared of what everybody else in this room thinks of you, that you make sure that you compress yourself while I do this talk, but really after this, I'm going to have a big meltdown. I'm going to bang in my head on the back of my bed. I've got all my sensory ears. I've got my lovely little teddy down there. But people never see that kind of stuff. They just see me. So I thought, you know what it is? I'm going to quit my job. I think this is absolutely awesome. I'm going to make sure that no child has to feel the same way that I did because I am sick of waking up in the morning and doing this massive big curve which made me feel like an absolute freak and a weirdo. I'm going to make sure that every single child actually feels awesome about having something because when you've got autism, you've got it for life. So you can either like it or lump it and there's nothing you can do about it. So I always try and think to myself, let's try and flip things in life into a positive. So when I opened Awesome Tistic, and this has only been open a year, I went to Ford Garage and I told them that I was awesome and I says, Rich, I said to Ford, I've got autism and it's awesome. I've got a vision. I want to pull up in a Ford Mustang GT, five litre, 
Let them children know that people with autism are bloody awesome. He went, I says, will you sponsor us? He went, yeah. So they give me a free car. <laughs> so I drive that around all of the time, so that's pretty cool, isn't it? Um, so since I've opened Awesome Tistic and everybody's taken a liking to us and I'm trying my best, like I said to you before, I'm just Richie, trying to be somebody that I can just finally be myself and that's why it says on the back of my top, it's okay to be me because I've got people making us cakes, I've got people um, going to World Book Day wanting to be like Richie, people making us model cars, people making us Lego models and it's absolutely fantastic. Um, I have helped two and a half thousand families, 3,000 children, I've done 179 talks, um, I've literally all done all of this... <clears throat> I'm not going to cry. Um, I'm going to make sure I've done this all by myself and to the point that I got crowned um, the autism hero at um, Christmas on the way down. Um, and that was a massive achievement. I actually started really being upset because I always thought I was uh, going to be a freak and a weirdo forever. And I knew when I won this award that I wasn't a freak anymore. And um, I, I decided to write a book. So this is all in the year. So I kind of done all of this in one year and I wrote a book called... <laughs> The Art of Wean in the Sink, and it's all in detail. Obviously, I've only got a short period of time to talk to you guys today, but all of my big life stories in there. Um, and now I'll make sure that any no child makes us or wants to feel like a freak. Um, and I'm just going to end it there because I've kind of caught up myself. So thanks very much. Thank you.